What I'd like to talk about today is the English Civil War. I want to try and keep this as brief as I can. So here's the quick version of it. English Civil War, mid-17th century, a struggle between the monarchy and Parliament over whether England is going to be an absolute monarchy or not. That's a simple version. Slightly more detailed version. It's the Stuart monarchs in the mid-17th century trying to establish divine right monarchy, and they're facing opposition from a body called Parliament, which is the legislature of England, and they're facing opposition because the English tradition is that, that a monarch is not an absolute monarch, but that Parliament decides on taxation rates and they decide on the laws with the approval of the monarch. And so the Stuart kings, particularly Charles I of England, come up against this English tradition and there's a war over who's right and Parliament wins, establishing the precedent of England being a limited monarchy, sets it on the path toward becoming a more democratic nation, such as it is today. So a couple of key points that they're fighting over. Uh, Parliament, which is made up of two houses. You've got the House of Lords, the high-ranking nobles, and the bishops. And you have the House of Commons, which is made up of wealthy landowners known as gentlemen or the gentry and minor nobles. So it's not a democracy. Only rich people can, and particularly people who get their wealth from land, can run for the House of Commons and serve in the House of Commons. So Charles I comes to power after the death of his father, James I. These are the Stuart monarchs. They are also kings of Scotland and Ireland, as well as kings of England. And Charles is really just trying to do what other monarchs of the time period are trying to do. In the 17th century, in France, in the Holy Roman Empire, in Russia, monarchs are trying to do the same thing. They're trying to establish the right to build an army, a standing army. They're trying to establish the right to dictate the religion to their people. And they're trying to establish the right to make laws without having to worry about any kind of legislature or constraint on their power, and also to collect taxes without any restraint on their power. Charles isn't trying to do anything differently than Louis XIV is trying to do in France, or the Holy Roman Emperor is trying to do, or Peter the Great in Russia. They're all trying to do the same thing. Charles fails at it, just as the Holy Roman Emperor does. And so, uh, so Charles gets in there and he tries a couple of tactics that Parliament really disapproves of. He tries collecting taxes through what's called shift money. This is a tax that traditionally the monarchs were able to do without Parliament, but it was supposed to be very limited in nature to protect the coastal towns. Charles tries to widen that out. He sells titles of nobility. People hate that, especially the nobles. They feel like, they, they feel like it cheapens their title. Um, he uses something called the Star Chamber to prosecute his opponents, uh, a court where people have very few rights. He tries to build a standing army in Ireland to control the Irish people. The people in England are afraid that this army will be brought over and used to control England as well. And he tries to impose the Church of England on Scotland, the Presbyterians in Scotland, and he tries to impose the Church of England on the Puritans in England as well. And the Puritans and the Scots respond very poorly to that. So he kind of cobbles things together and keeps things going for a little while, but Parliament becomes increasingly resistant. They demand he agree to a limitation of his rights in 1628 called Petition of Right. He agrees to get his tax money, and he goes back on his word. In the uh, 1630s, he tries to impose his religion on the Scots. They rebel. They actually invade northern England. He tries to get money to do that, to, to fight them, and Parliament resists. He calls Parliament in 1640 and says, I need money to defend the country. Parliament says no, and so uh, he just sends them all home and uh, calls the Parliament again. Parliament and the same people are elected. They refuse again. Uh, he tries to arrest his opponents, and this triggers the war. Short version of the war, he loses, gets executed. Um, the guy that comes out on top is a guy named Oliver Cromwell, and uh, he's an important member of Parliament. He's a Puritan. And uh, for a while, Parliament tries to rule without any king, but they're corrupt and inefficient, so Cromwell says enough of this. He takes over rules as essentially dictator. He does everything that Charles did. He imposes his Puritan religion on the people. He has a standing army. He uh, rules without Parliament, and he essentially abuses his power the way that Charles was accused of doing. But he's more effective at it. He's a better absolute ruler, in a sense. But when he dies and his son tries to rule the same way, uh, the English people aren't going to put up with it. So Parliament reconvenes. They invite Charles's son, 
who was in exile in France, Charles II, to come and be the new king. This is called the Restoration. Charles II, he kind of knows where the power lies, and so he, uh, he plays nicely with Parliament. But when he dies, he has no legitimate heirs. He has lots of illegitimate children, but no legitimate heirs. And so his younger brother, James, James II, takes over. James II's like daddy. He doesn't know when to stop. He's a closet Catholic, which the Puritans can't stand, and, and many of the other Anglicans at the time were, were nervous about. But more importantly, he tries to rule with divine right. He tries to rule by Parliament. He's only on the throne for three years before Parliament says enough of that. They kick him out. This is called the Glorious Revolution in 1688. And the new king, William III, they fight in Ireland at the Battle of the Boyne. William III wins. So the new king agrees to the Bill of Rights, and he agrees to rule as a limited monarch so he can get the throne of England for himself to help him fight his enemy, France. And from that point on, England is a constitutional monarchy or a limited monarchy, and it's continuing on its progression towards becoming the representative democracy that it is today. So I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.